is Payson. And I'm Derek Cobia. We don't have a name, but we are the frugal RVer on social media, so we're still working on the name. We bought the bus on eBay. It was uh, just outside of Atlanta and they actually delivered it to us in uh, Stone Mountain Campground, which is where we uh, were living at in our RV. And uh, yeah, the RV was kind of restricting. We were limited by the size and um, electrical pull. So we decided to downsize and build something a little more <coughs> self-sustainable. Welcome to our home. The first thing that you see when you come into our home is our giant AC unit. It does really well for us. It does the job. We're from Georgia, so we're from humidity and heat. So this was a priority for us. It uses up a lot of energy, but it works well for us. The brand of the AC unit, I believe, is called Winter. Um, we got it for about $400 on Amazon. We've done some research on it. It's a dehumidifier as well as an AC unit. There is another one that has a heat component with it, but it didn't get as good of reviews. So we went with this one and it's pretty great for us. As long as we're level, if we're not, it'll leak a little, but we have a little tray under there that does the job. We definitely use solar to power this, but we can't do it all day long. We can, we'll typically turn it on for an hour or two, cut it off. Sometimes we can run it longer if we've got good sun. We can run it all our solar, but we absolutely use our solar to run our AC unit. Next, we have our heat source. So this is our wood burning stove. Um, we got this from Tiny Wood Stoves. It's a dwarf stove and it might be our favorite thing in the bus. So it heats the bus so nicely. It keeps it warm and we can kind of control it because um, it's smaller. So, you know, less wood you have in it. We also use it as little heat source for boiling water. We keep the teapot on it so that we can also have humidity in the air, but it has been a gem in our bus. We love it so much. When we throw wood into it, we can typically get it to last, I'd say about two hours, and that's with us refueling it. And we're just getting sticks from outside or we'll buy firewood and chop it up. Um, but we do have to be pretty diligent about keeping it fueled because otherwise it will go out and have to start all over again. But this is Derek's baby, so he loves filling it with wood constantly. So it's always on and it's always warm. So next, moving into our kitchen. This was a tricky piece for us, trying to figure out space and really what we could do with what we, the space we have. So starting here, we put latches on it to lock it in place when we're driving, but this is barn wood from his parents' farm that we turn into sliding doors for our pantry. And then the table also, or it also turns into a table. We have little legs that we put underneath it and it props up as our dinner table and it is also our office. Building this sliding system was a bit of a struggle because we had to figure out spacing, but we actually stole this idea from a girl online, Anna White. She was building an office for a tiny house and she did sliding doors that turned up into tables and we figured that was genius because this is such a tiny space. So we went and got the hardware and we had it all cut um, to size, which was huge hassle trying to figure out, but we finally got it. And then we just found wood from Derek's parents' farm and kind of created this little sliding pantry system. In the plans we found online, it was an office, so it was split into identical thirds. So the blue prints were perfect for thirds, but we are turning it into a kitchen and we have additional space here. So trying to separate it into thirds didn't quite work out for us, which is where the challenges came into play. But we were able to figure out how big we wanted each section to be and measured it out that way and it worked out for us. These baskets we got at Walmart in the bathroom section. These are with like stuff that you would use in your shower, I guess. In fact, or at least that's where we got them and they're super cheap in Walmart. And we bought the baskets for festivals that we go to. We sell products and we put them in the baskets. And 
we found that we really liked them in our kitchen a little better. So that's actually why they have prices on them. Our fruit is not $2 for, two for 15. But the great thing is we have a little tiny lip behind our counter so they don't go anywhere when we're driving. So we don't have to take them off. They also have these little rubber feet on them. So that would keep them from moving as well. But we leave them right here when we're driving and we've never had any issues unless we have our fruit piled high, then they might roll out. But yeah, same with these. We got these on Amazon. These were like, I think they're like maybe five or $10 on Amazon and they're great because they hold everything inside of them. So driving is no issue. We don't have to take anything down. When we were building the kitchen, the countertop was a bit of an issue for us. In fact, we left without a completed countertop because we said, you know what, the bus is finished enough, let's just go. So we had it painted white and I hated it because it just felt dirty all the time. So one day we were in a laundromat parking lot and it was simply just a glossy white paint and I had retouched it several times and I just feel like I was always doing that. So I took out my Sharpies <laughs> and I drew a little picture because I wanted it to be more interesting. And we do eventually want to maybe add a butcher block or something on top or redo the whole countertops. But for right now it is white paint and Sharpie marker. A little artistic design on there. Okay, over here, we have another space saver. So we wanted more counter space as well as a refrigerator. So Derek got us a deep freezer that we converted into a refrigerator. So that way we have the fridge, which can also be converted into a freezer if we were off grid and we wanted everything frozen. Because if you look down here, we have um, a little $15 temperature gauge that we bought on Amazon. It's called Inkbird and change the temperature on it. Now it's a refrigerator, gives us counter space and because it, the uh, cool stays in better. So it's more energy efficient. All right, moving forward, we have our nice big apron front farm sink. When we were looking for sinks, I wanted something big. It felt like when I was looking at other people's builds or tiny houses, a lot of them had small sinks. And I cook a lot and also have a child. And this is another use for the sink. We like to bathe her in here sometimes. So we found this sink on Amazon. It was a little pricey. I think it was about $200, but it has been well worth the buy. Um, if you look here, we actually have a tub faucet as our faucet. So Derek wanted to minimize and make everything simple. So he said, let's have one faucet that would go from our sink to our tub also can go outside for outdoor showers. So this is a tub faucet, the telephone handle. Got that on Amazon and it has been wonderful. I like the look of it. It's really different looking and kind of antique, but does the job, works well for us. So underneath the sink, this also can turn into a table. We can combine the two into a larger table if we want. And then underneath our sink is nothing exciting. It's a little bit of a mess. It's really just our cleaning supplies. We keep some of our hand towels and stuff like that under there, but that's really just a simple storage space for us. The beauty in such a small space, or I don't know if you would call it the beauty, we kind of like that everything is condensed. So we don't really have a bathroom per se. So our kitchen is also our bathroom. So our sink is also our bathroom sink. So we keep our toothbrushes up here, toothpaste. We have our vitamins are in the little lip back here. We keep some hand soap, so we use the restroom and we come right to our sink. So it's small space, but you gotta make it work however you can. Across from our sink, right across this way, is our bathroom. When we were building, we decided having walls was gonna make this space enclosed. It was gonna make it a lot smaller. So we chose to go with curtains instead of walls. It bothers some people, but for us, we're perfectly fine with it. We have a nature's head composting toilet, which we absolutely love. It helps us to live off grid. So we can, you know, we don't have to have a tank or anything like that underneath. And we came from an RV before this where we had black tanks and gray tanks. So having the composting toilet is wonderful. 
So it's our tiny itty bitty little bathroom, but it works well for us and walls don't matter when you're in a small space anyway. If we're moving forward, we have our couch. So we built our couch with little cup holders on each side. We have storage on each side. We have books over here and um, it's really adult books and children's books on the other end. We built this, or actually we sewed the pillows together. They're reversible on each side and bought foam off of Amazon, cut it in half and Derek's mom sewed us some awesome uh, cushion covers that can be taken off and washed, which is great. This is a, a thing everyone is curious about and everyone loves to learn. So if you take the couch like this and you take it apart, over here is where our daughter rides when we're traveling. So she's three, so she has to be buckled into a car seat. So we take car seat and we hook it in so she faces forward. The seat belt is bolted into the frame and we have a little hook back here. So she hooks in, she faces forward, and she absolutely loves getting to look out the side windows, look up front. And then when we get to where we're going, we take her car seat out and we have our couch. And it's really easy and it takes no time. Underneath our couch is our battery storage. So pretty much from about here all the way over is our battery bank. Back here we have Payson's bed. So we wanted this to be her little space because it is a small area, but Payson really needed to have a place where she could go and play. So we have a place for some of her toys up here, but we also have a couple of baskets and things hanging for her toys. And more often than not, you'll find her up in her bed playing with her toys. And it's a great little cubby space for her. She loves it. We love it. Gives her a place. Also, while we were building, we realized she needed a place for her clothes. We figured a place for our clothes, but she needed a place. So if we take this down, can lift her bed up. Then we just prop it like this. And under here we have her closet. So we have all of her, some shoes, clothes over here. We also have some of her art supplies and her toys over on this side. Some more books under there, just little things that she doesn't play with every day, but we can pull out when we want. And this has been amazing. She has more space for clothes than we do. Over here we have our bathtub. When we were building the bus, one of my main priorities, as well as Derek's, was to have a tub of some kind. After doing a bunch of research, we realized tubs are really expensive and they're really heavy. So we bought a stock tank from Tractor Supply for $90 and we coated the inside of it with an appliance epoxy and now we have a super cheap tub. We do, we ended up just recently adding a new handle here because of our hot water heater that's over here. But you know, we can't fully bathe in it because we only have 65 gallons of fresh water. So we more so shower in it or we'll stop it up and we will take a miniature bath, but it can't, I mean, it's a hundred gallon tub, so we obviously can't fill it. But sometimes if we were at a campground or a place with more water, we will, but it works really well for what we need. It's also storage when we're traveling. When we were building it, we used first a automobile primer and then an appliance epoxy, just to spray paint. And if you notice, it's chipping in several places. So if you were to do something like this, we have heard that you should powder coat it first and then maybe they have um, a tub enamel roll on. That's what we've heard may work better. This is also the four foot tub and we would recommend if you do it, go with the three foot tub. Behind our tub, we have a Triton hot water heater. It works really well. It's a newer addition to our bus. We used to not have hot water which we made work, but uh, another thing we don't recommend, you should always have hot water, works really well. And we've got it in this little space, which is fine for us. Uh, our little hamper is here. We have a queen size bed back here. Underneath our bed is where our closet is. So if I lift this up, you can see that we have our clothes and little baskets down here. And then the same with our shoes. Derek built us little cubbies so that we could just shove our shoes in there. 
which is a really nice addition and a place to keep our shoes. So behind our bed we have little cubbies and those cubbies are just miscellaneous things that are just extra storage for us. Same with our wooden baskets over here kind of hidden behind our jackets. It just has our socks and underwear and different things that we need that kind of stay out of the way over here. So our bed is a queen size bed and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure the mattress brand. We got it from a friend, but it was brand new in the box. It's a gel foam bed, which I highly recommend. It's really comfortable and it, it stays cool in the summertime and it's warm in the wintertime. Also underneath our bed, our bed lifts up and we have storage in the front for some of our things like our projector and um, the lotion that we make. The back is Derek's garage that so has all of his tools and all that kind of stuff. So whenever we built the bus, there weren't a whole lot of resources out there at a the time. This is only like a year and a half ago and the movement has just kind of taken off. So um, anyways, because we didn't really know what to do with the ceiling, we went with paneling and uh, we haven't seen that done very often. So it worked out okay. It bent pretty nicely. It was kind of a pain to get in, but um, I'm not a huge fan of how it behaves. Just like these small imperfections of how like one bends a little more than the other. That kind of drives me crazy, but overall I think it, it did okay. It's a cheap solution for a ceiling. And then we also went with uh, recessed LED lights, which is, yeah, it, it puts out a lot of light during nighttime. So nobody really asks and we don't really ever think to tell people about our medicine cabinet but we figured it went nicely in our emergency equipment first aid kit body fluid kit warning device fire extinguisher area <laughs> so that's where we put everything this is a 2003 bluebird it's got a 5.9 liter engine cummins 545 allison transmission and uh, we bought this specific combination just because we had done some research our first priority was length we didn't want a full size we wanted something a little on the shorter end and we wanted a flat nose for maneuverability and our first priority would have been the dt466 engine but uh the cummins was a close second the 466 was our top choice because uh it's got removable sleeves so you can do an in-frame rebuild no reason for going with the front engine over the rear this was the only setup that we could find in this size and that had priority we would have preferred something in the rear it's easier to work on a little quieter but uh, yeah this is what we found so this is what we've got the only negatives really or I guess the biggest negative with the front engine is accessibility uh, they're not quite as easy to work on it is pretty loud and yeah other than that we we have no complaints we've had an issue with the tappet cover which is pretty common with this specific engine but we fixed that and that's really been the the biggest issue we've had certainly the most expensive maneuverability in this is absolutely amazing we've got the turning radius of probably better than most pickup trucks because it's only 20 feet 28 feet long bumper to bumper we can go almost anywhere the wheels being behind us we can almost make a 90 degree turn it's pretty incredible so we we can park in um, about a a space and a half at most places so there really aren't too many limitations to where we can go electrical was a huge priority for us we wanted to make sure that we could live off grid pretty comfortably so we have 1200 amp hours of battery power we're running 24 volts to the inverters uh, we've got two inverters because this is actually a charge controller as well so we can plug into shore power 50 amp shore power 30 amp or 15 and then this is just a regular inverter so we went with two just simply because of cost and we've got 1200 watts solar and yeah it's it's more than enough we can't quite run an ac through the night but uh we can run it for most of the day if it's sunny out and then heat we have a wood burning stove so yeah we're really happy with our electrical setup yeah we have 1200 amp hours of battery power they are agm batteries so pretty low maintenance there we do vent them a little bit just in you know a small little hole at the bottom of, of the couch but there's really not much need to vent so pretty low maintenance there and we're really happy with them. We would have preferred lithium, but we did a cost comparison and uh, they like to be climate controlled and it was just too expensive. It didn't seem to justify the price. Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming in and checking out our home. You can follow us online at uh, the Frugal RVer is our username pretty much across all platforms, Instagram, Facebook. I don't believe YouTube, but if you search the Frugal RVer on YouTube, you can find us there as well.
Also, we have an Etsy shop. We sell something called solid lotion, so you can find us at the Frugal RVer on Etsy as well. Thanks for watching.